Has Sony finally made a great gaming TV? Well, in this video, we'll be testing the gaming performance of their new affordable OLED, the Sony A80L. This is their budget WRGB OLED, which sits below their flagship A95L QD OLED. So let's see how it performs. Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And I'm also an avid gamer, so we're gonna test to see just how well this A80L performs for gaming. And we'll be using my gaming PC, the Villa Consola version 2, which I recently rebuilt, and you can check out that video up there if you haven't seen it. But my gaming PC is based on a Ryzen 7800X 3D CPU and an NVIDIA RTX 4090. GPU. So it's pretty powerful. So we'll be seeing just how well this A80L can keep up. Now before that, let's go over some specs as it relates to gaming. So the input lag at 60 Hertz is 21 millisecond with VRR enabled and it goes down to 60 milliseconds when VRR is disabled. At 120 Hertz, the input lag with VRR enabled is 17 milliseconds and without it, it's all the way down to eight milliseconds. So use that knowledge how you may, the TV performs better as far as input lag is concerned when VRR is disabled. And you can enable and disable VRR using the new game bar that is present on the 2023 Sony TVs. As far as color accuracy is concerned, we measured the average Delta E of the TV and that tells us how perceptible the color inaccuracies are. And at the level of this TV, 4.1, then the image inaccuracies can be visible to the eye. At that range though, the image inaccuracies are perceptible. If it was lower than two per se, then it wouldn't be as perceptible. And if it was lower than one, then it wouldn't be perceptible at all. We measured the max luminance for those HDR peak brightness at 670 nits, which is pretty bright for an OLED TV, but clearly not as bright as an LED backlit LCD TV, like the QLED TVs from Samsung or any other manufacturers for that matter. But on the other hand, the OLED has individual control, of course, of every pixel on screen. So it'll have perfect contrast for those really high dynamic scenes where part of the screen is completely black and then another part is completely bright. You'll not see anything like ghosting or halos. All right, let's get into the actual gaming performance. Let's go to the settings and make sure everything is how we want it to be. And since it's a 120 hertz panel, then we'll set the resolution to 4K at 120 hertz. We'll have VSync disabled because this game specifically does not support FreeSync or G-Sync. If you want that enabled, it would have to be enabled in the uh, NVIDIA control panel. The max resolution or the max desired frame rate, I should say, will be 600. So we want the game to generate as many frames as possible. And since this is an RTX 4090, then I'm betting we'll get pretty close to that 600 frames per second mark. HDR will, of course, be enabled too. With HDR enabled, we'll have better colors, of course, and higher peak brightness for those specular highlights. So it's for sure something you want to have enabled on a 4K HDR TV. And the camera ISO is set to automatic, so the exposure can vary based on the brightness of the scene. So you may see some brightness fluctuations as the screen is recorded. Just know that's because of the camera and not because of the TV. When testing a TV like this, I think it's important to use a game you're familiar with so you can see how much the TV changes the experience. And Overwatch 2 is a game I am very familiar with. I've played this game at 60 hertz and 120 hertz, and 120 hertz is as smooth as it can be, and it is no different on this TV. If you're playing a competitive game like this one, then every movement you make is just super quick and buttery smooth, especially if you have a high performance graphics card that can generate those frames as quickly as the TV can process them. Especially if you have a high performance graphics card that can generate those frames as quickly as your TV can display them. 
I don't often play this character in this game, Ramatra, but when I do, I enjoy it. The average frame per second is in the 300 or 400 frames per second range, so it's nowhere near the 120 hertz that the TV displays at. So I don't think we'll see much in the realm of screen tearing in this game. This will be more for just to see how well the TV performs, how fast it is at transitioning and reacting, and how well it displays the colors and highlights. And suffice it to say, if you can tell from the video, this game looks gorgeous on this TV and is super responsive. So I give this full marks for playing a competitive game like Overwatch. Does it actually make me better? Well, you decide. This game also has a pretty cartoony design and the colors as a result are pretty vibrant and that comes across very well on this TV. On this map, the sunlit portions of the snow mounds are pretty bright. They have pretty good specular highlights, so that's great to see too on an OLED TV. I think Sony TVs have some good HDR reproduction and that's also translated well in game mode where games, HDR games, come across really well. And this AADL is no exception. I think when they're playing a game like Overwatch 2 or one like say Call of Duty where you need to have quick reflexes and precise control then a TV with as low a response time as this one does and the high refresh rate certainly helps. One of the biggest drawbacks I see for this TV for gaming is the fact that it's limited to only two HDMI 2.1 ports. So if you have, say, you know, both next-gen consoles or current-gen consoles and a gaming PC, then you will need to have an HDMI 2.1 receiver so you can connect all those devices at once. Or if you just have your TV and using the sound from your TV, then you will have to switch out devices whenever you want to use one or just limit your consoles to the HDMI 2.0 ports. And I think at this point in time in 2023, there's no real excuse for this TV only having two HDMI 2.1 ports, especially when the alternatives, the competition like the LG C2 has four HDMI 2.1 ports. And that TV is more suited for gaming because of its different uh, gaming features that it supports like NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync. But the VRR that's a part of the HDMI 2.1 spec can compensate for that on the AADL. So you don't necessarily need those in all instances. But those HDMI 2.1 ports, I think is the biggest miss of this TV for gaming. The new gaming bar is a great addition and you can turn on and turn off VRR as you wish and if you turn off VRR then you get say about five seconds more or five seconds less uh, of a input lag but in the real world it's not really perceptible because the response time the input lag with VRR enabled is really very low uh, just by default but in the real world I don't think it'll be that perceptible because it's only say about a five millisecond reduction in the input lag but it's still a reduction i will say though as vibrant as these colors are they do look pretty accurate except for say the cooler appearance when recorded i know this tv has a slight bias for the blue colors but oleds in general appear on the cooler side when you record them so it does look slightly different in person so what's the verdict? Well, the AADL did perform very well, not only in those high frame rate, highly competitive games like Overwatch 2, but also in those more cinematic experience games like Hogwarts Legacy and something like Cyberpunk 2077, which is very demanding. Although in Cyberpunk 2077, I did see a lot of, not a lot, but I did see some tiering with some close inspection. So I'm not sure if the VRR was enabled properly because that shouldn't be happening and in using a console then VRR would be 
a much more streamlined and easier thing to enable than on the PC, which sometimes you have to enable some special settings. But even so, the tiering wasn't bad. It's something that you had to really look for. The one drawback I see for this TV, as far as gaming is concerned, is the fact that it only has two HDMI 2.1 ports. So if you want to connect all your consoles and the PC, then you won't be able to do that unless you have another device connected, like say an HDMI 2.1 receiver, which then would ex expand the amount of HDMI 2.1 ports you have. Having just two limits you to either using a two HDMI 2.1 devices or switching out devices as you see fit or just sticking to uh, 4K at 60 Hertz for one of your consoles. But you can't have three such devices enabled to their full potential. Another fact uh, or another issue I should say is the fact that the HDMI ports have a weird setting where they can have VRR and Dolby Vision enabled at the same time because to enable the enhanced signal mode of the HDMI 2.1 ports you'll have to either select standard enhanced mode which is for 4k sources then there's another one for 4k Dolby Vision sources and another one after that for 4k with VRR sources so for game consoles which is really weird I don't think I see any other manufacturers doing that it's only Sony because on say an LG TV then once you enable the the enhanced 4k signal to enable 4k on your uh, HDMI ports then you don't really have to select what kind of signal your device will be feeding the TV it just interprets it automatically and displays it as a result so I think that's kind of a cumbersome interface that Sony can improve upon by fixing. But all that said, Sony is known for their great picture processing and image quality. So if that's also important to you, but you also game, then the A80L is a great choice that should be on your shortlist. And if you're interested in learning more about this TV or buying one, then I've included links in the description below. So the next TV I'll be testing is LG's brand new G3 with their MLA technology on their OLED. So I'll be testing the bigger one too. So that should be pretty exciting. So if you're not subscribed yet, then make sure to do that and come back for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, thanks for watching. Until next time. This has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying be safe and peace.